Can you imagine if your family just miraculously was being fed every week and the grocery shopping was being done and you really had minimal to totally hands off in the whole process? Well, I'm going to share with you the tried and true system that we use in our own house and how I really am limited to about 20 to 40 minutes each week instead of the previous 14 days I used to spend a year. Now, that's throughout the year, but the weekly hour allotment added up to 14 days of my time. So let's get started. First off, I am going to share with you how we get the planning part done, all right? This I have 100% delegated. It is off of my plate completely, and let me tell you, it is such a great experience for families. So all you need, and you can tweak this in any way that works for you. So this is where you know your family dynamics. You know what's going to work for you, so please adjust accordingly. What I do is I was running into the, what's for dinner? I don't want that. Can I have something else? Can I, really, do we have to eat that again? And I was like, hey, I'm putting in a lot of effort on this. And it's not exactly having the best response. So what I did was I gave my husband and my six-year-old a stack of index cards. And I said, okay, guys, I want you to decide what we're going to eat this week. And what they do is they put the name of the recipe at the top of the index card. Then they put the ingredients that they need for whatever that meal is. This one happens to be pulled barbecue. And they put the ingredients underneath the recipe or just the name of the meal. So some things you're not going to have a recipe for. Now, the nice thing is... We, for a whole week, will pick out five meals because between cooking it for a family of four and lunches and leftovers, five meals is perfect for us. And we usually end up ordering pizza or something throughout the week. So that is the very first step is put your family in charge. Let them say, what do you want to eat this week? Now, here's some additional really fun ways that you can uh, incorporate learning and different experiences into your meals. First stop, give your kids and your you know significant other, spouse, whoever, give them a set of cookbooks. You maybe you have them in your home, maybe you pick them up at the library, uh, maybe there's one you've been wanting to try, so order it off of Amazon. But grab, let them just look through the cookbooks, and this. Kip loves doing this. He's six. He will look through the recipe books and he'll say, I want to make this or I want to make that. Perfect. If you do that, so if you're using, you know, a recipe book, I will come up with an abbreviation and then the page number and you add that to the card. All right. These cards are going to become long term. So the more information you can give yourself, the easier it's going to be. So one, it gets kids reading. It gets them looking at pictures. It gets them exploring and it puts them in an ownership role in terms of they are playing a role in something that they probably have been pretty passive at. Like, hey, here, this is what's for dinner. Gets it off of your plate. Now, don't give them cookbooks that you're like, oh, I don't want to cook anything out of that. Don't do that. Choose the stuff that you like. You could also do this for anything on the internet. You know, let them go exploring. If you have a subscription, I happen to have one to the Forks Over Knives meal planning, like annual meal planner. So Kip can go in there, he can put some recipes that he likes, and then we just add like chicken or fish to recipes. We're not a totally vegan or vegetarian household. I just try to get us eating as healthy as possible. So that is just the meal planning portion, all right? How many meals do you need for the week? And then putting them on a card. Now, again, that's the part you can tweak. For us, Kip is learning to write. He is learning to read. He's in kindergarten. So the cards are great because he can practice spelling words. We can sit there and do it with him. So even though we are technically meal planning, we're also learning. We're spending time as a family. We're able to be creative. We're able to expand, you know, beyond our normal, like what we would eat all the time. You know, this, the ruts that you kind of get stuck in. Now, once you have this part done, 
And this part, I should mention, when you're doing it, you want to think about who is the best person to meal plan because it might not be you. It was me for years and years. And I'm like, this is not, this is silly. I really don't care what we eat. And I have other people that really do. And they voice their opinions in a very respectful way, but they're still voicing their opinions. So guess what? They are the perfect person to do the meal plan. You also want to look at when is the best time for them to do it. Pick a time that's not rushed, that you're not tired or stressed or up against a deadline. For us, it's Sunday afternoons. There's not a lot going on. They, Chris and Kip can take a half an hour to an hour and you know take their time in doing it. So that is key, is who's the best person and when is the best time for them to do it. Once they have the meal planning done, then you've got to actually get all the groceries, right? Well, here's where I challenge you to really think about how can you completely get grocery shopping off of your plate. Now, depending on where you live, you may have already done this or you've been doing this for a long time. Where I live, we just got grocery delivery in our, like, area. So our grocery stores now will deliver directly to my home. And this is so key. So once you have your ingredients, I encourage you, see if there's a service like shipped.com in your area. I know in New York, it's called Seamless. In LA, they also have Seamless. Um, we don't have that, but we have shipped.com. And Chris can look at the ingredients. Then he looks in the kitchen. What do we already have that's in the fridge or the pantry that we don't need to actually like get from the grocery store. Anything that we still need, he logs into shipped.com. He enters in the groceries and the quantities, and then we decide what's the best delivery time. So when you're thinking about your groceries, where, who is the best person to be doing that? Now, for us prior to shift.com, it was Chris. He gets up crazy ridiculously early in the morning, like 3.30, and goes to the gym. It's crazy ridiculously early. And then he would do the grocery shopping afterwards. So there were no lines. He was the stock, the shelves were stocked. He was able to get in, get out very efficient. I didn't have to go with the boys or find time during the day to go. He was the best person to do the grocery shopping. So in your home, who is the best person to do the grocery shopping? Do you have teenagers? Do you have college age kids? Do you have a spouse or significant other? Or is it you? Do you have an, a system like Shipped that you could outsource all that time to somebody else. So that's the second part is you have your meals, you look and see, okay, what do I already have in the kitchen? You don't need to order that again. You have the groceries. So you get the groceries, you know, however you're gonna get that done. And really and truly, one of the biggest wastes of your time is grocery shopping. Even if you enjoy it, I do enjoy it. It is the biggest waste of my time really anywhere from two to four hours each week is how much I would spend getting dressed, getting the kids in the car, going to the store, doing the shopping, checking out, loading the car, driving home, unloading, and dealing with children. So at a minimum, it's two to four hours. I could do a lot in my life with an extra four hours, hence how I bought back 14 days of my life with this system I'm explaining to you guys. So I set the delivery date when it's most convenient for me. So for us, the most, the best person to unload the groceries and put them away is me. The best time for me to do this is a weekday when my youngest, who is two, is napping. Absolutely the best time. My grocery angel shows up at my garage door. They bring the kitchens, the groceries right into my kitchen. I unload it. I'm done in maybe 15 minutes. And so that's why we set the delivery time for when it's best for my calendar. A weekday during nap time is when our groceries get delivered. So the that rounds out your meals and getting the groceries. Now, next, I'm going to share with you how we do the preparing, the cooking, and the cleaning up. But before that, I am really curious to know... How, how do you do this in your home? Do you have like time-saving tips and tricks you would like to share with, with us? Uh, because 
it's something that happens every week. We're constantly doing this, feeding, you know, feeding our families and doing like meal planning and grocery shopping. And if we're not careful, we are giving away crazy amounts of our time that it's, it's really one of the easiest things to quickly get a rain on and, or rain it in, uh, and buy it back so that you aren't wasting that time, but instead you are investing it so that you can spend it doing other things that you really and truly enjoy. I am thrilled that I could share this with you, and I will see you again really, really soon. Bye for now.